there is a nation that has lifted over 410 million people out of poverty in a span of just 15 years. For contrast, that's the entire population of Brazil, Japan, and Germany combined. This country has space missions traversing the Moon, Mars, and the Sun. Its GDP has surged by ninefold in the past 30 years, a growth rate leaving even the most advanced economies green with envy, a demographic force that's set to become the world's largest working age population by 2027, a potential labor pool that eclipses the combined workforce of the US and Europe. If you are not living under a rock, then you must have already figured out that we are talking about India. Nestled at the fulcrum of Asia, India's ascendancy isn't just shaping its own destiny, but sculpting the very contours of the world's largest continent. From the skyscrapers of Mumbai to the agrarian heartlands of Punjab, this is a tale of urban metamorphosis and rural resurgence, a transformation that's echoing through every corner of this vast nation. Buckle up as we unravel the extraordinary narrative of India's rise, its opportunities, its challenges, and its undeniable impact on the world stage. Chapter 1. India's Past In 1947, when India gained independence, it inherited an economy with a per capita income of a mere $90, lagging far behind the global average. From the scars of centuries-long colonial history, India decided to proceed with the license Raj, an era of stifling regulations. This meant that you'd need to have licenses from a plethora of license inspectors to do any sort of business. License Raj saw the government's hand extend into every facet of the economy. Red tape became the norm. Through the 60s and 70s, the License Raj stifled entrepreneurship, with over 80 licenses needed to start a business, effectively smothering innovation. This not only affected the private sector, but also impacted consumers greatly. To get a telephone connection at your home, you'd have to wait for years just to get your application approved. The situation to get a scooter or a car was even grimmer. It seemed like rather than gaining independence, India changed hands from being a colony of the British Raj to the License Raj. To make things worse, India started utilizing the Soviet-inspired five-year plans to frame industrial policies and guide the nation's economic course. Profit became a dirty word to use. Massive state-owned enterprises burgeoned, shouldering the mantle of pivotal industries. Sectors such as aviation and banking that were previously open for private firms were nationalized. The situation was even worsening for agriculture, which while employing over two-thirds of the population, yet contributed less than one-fifth to the GDP, highlighting a profound productivity gap. A vast population of farmers either did not have any land of their own or were toiling on fragmented lands. Condition was so dire that late Indian Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri appealed to the citizens to sacrifice one meal every day so that the nation can avoid a potential food crisis. On top of all this, continuous wars with its neighbors, Pakistan and China, and the subsequent influx of millions of refugees from Tibet and Bangladesh, erstwhile East Pakistan, put an incessant burden on already thin and stretched national resources. For close to 40 years from its independence, India kept its borders shut for foreign companies and investments, hoping that its state-run enterprises would rise up to fill the gap. But that didn't happen. The public sector companies, realizing they were a monopoly, became extremely notorious for sitting over the same files for years. As a result, India started relying heavily on foreign imports for its survival. These imports included everything from wheat and rice to milk and heavy machinery. But without any consistent source of national income, soon enough, India found itself unable to pay up for these foreign goods. Its gold reserves started touching the red line. This resulted in a balance of payment crisis of 1991. India had to secure an IMF loan just to get the ball rolling. But the loan came with a big condition. 
India had to open its markets for foreign companies. This tectonic shift is often termed as the 1991 economic liberalization of India. The country unshackled itself, inviting foreign investment, dismantling trade barriers, and paving the way for an economic renaissance. Slowly but steadily, India started abolishing license Raj from different domains and began to entrust the private sector again. The impact was seismic. From the late 90s onwards, India's GDP growth chart resembled a rocket's ascent, consistently outpacing global averages. Over the next two decades, India's GDP growth rate surged from 5.5% to over 8%. India's GDP, a meager $273 billion in 1991, catapulted to a staggering $3.9 trillion by 2023, symbolizing an unprecedented growth trajectory. No sector played as much of a vital role to India's economic success as did the information technology sector. The IT revolution catapulted India onto the global stage, the IT sector started contributing over 8% to the GDP, with exports exceeding $150 billion annually, solidifying India's position as a global tech hub. A nation once known for its agrarian roots became a tech powerhouse, exporting software, innovation, and intellect. The agriculture sector gained a massive productivity boost through the groundbreaking Green Revolution. A nation that once relied on imported grains to survive became one of the largest producers and exporters of staples, such as rice and wheat. Through the advent of white revolution, a nation that once was not able to feed itself became the largest producer of milk in the world. As India's influence was growing, it started finding itself courted by global leaders, courted for alliances, investments, and partnerships, while also navigating regional rivalries and historic tensions. Chapter 2. India's Present In 2022, India surged forward with an astounding 9% GDP growth rate, catapulting it among the fastest-growing economies worldwide. Today, India stands as the world's fifth-largest economy, poised to become third-largest by 2030. Let's analyze some facts and figures to understand why India's economy is booming. The heart of this growth is the services sector of the country. Service sector commands over 60% of India's GDP, marking its dominance in the global services industry. Don't get confused. Service sector is not just about software development and customer service. It's about the entire spectrum, from finance to healthcare, entertainment, to e-commerce. Next up is India's technological prowess. According to NASCOM, the IT sector in India reached a revenue of $194 billion in 2022. Third in line is the thriving startups ecosystem in India. Startups are sprouting like never before, propelling the country into the global tech limelight. India has emerged as the third largest startup ecosystem globally, with over 55,000 startups. It's a hub for innovation and entrepreneurship, fostering technological advancements. The NASCOM Zinov Startup Ecosystem Report 2021 highlights that India added over 1,600 startups in 2020, despite the challenges posed by the pandemic. Up fourth, we have the nation's demographics. With nearly 65% of the population below the age of 35, India possesses a potent demographic dividend. As per the World Economic Forum, India's demographic advantage could add 2% to its GDP growth annually for the next two decades. And that's not all. With over 700 million internet users, India also boasts one of the largest online populations globally. This widespread access to technology has also enabled digital transformation across industries. Let's also not forget the $100 billion plus remittance that India receives annually from its NRI population every year. Lastly, we have the financial sector which has witnessed significant expansion with a well-regulated banking system and a thriving stock market. 
This has provided the necessary financial infrastructure for investment and growth. The Reserve Bank of India reported that India's banking sector's total assets amounted to over $180 billion in the financial year 2020-21. We should also keep in mind that India's rise isn't only confined to its borders. It's intricately woven into the global supply chain. The Made in India tag reverberates across industries worldwide. The Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India, reported that India's total merchandise exports in 2020-21 stood at approximately $290 billion, indicating its substantial role in global trade. Yet, beneath this veneer of prosperity, deep fissures still persist. Just like the positive sides, let's also uncover major areas where India still needs to make significant improvements. First up is income inequality. India has one of the highest levels of income inequality globally. Oxfam's report, Time to Care, states that India's top 10% of the population holds 74.3% of the total national wealth. Second in line, we have access to quality education. Despite strides in education, access to quality schooling remains uneven across India. According to the National Sample Survey Office, only 10% of rural households and 24% of urban households have access to computers. Thirdly, we have physical infrastructure. While the country has been focusing on improving its infrastructure over the last decade, India still faces a substantial infrastructure gap in sectors like transportation, energy, and sanitation. This hinders economic growth and development. The National Infrastructure Pipeline estimates that India needs around $1.4 trillion in infrastructure investment by 2025. Fourth in line, we have problems related to agriculture. The agrarian sector, employing over 50% of India's workforce, faces challenges like stagnant productivity, land fragmentation, and inadequate access to markets. There has been no major factor driving improvement in agriculture output since the now outdated green and white revolution. Up fifth, we have access to quality healthcare. Disparities in access to quality healthcare services still persist, especially in rural and remote areas. COVID-19 pandemic further highlighted the inadequacies of the healthcare system. As per the National Health Profile 2020, India had only one doctor for every 1,511 people, highlighting the shortage of healthcare professionals. Lastly, let's uncover the environmental factor where India has been facing pressing challenges such as air pollution, water scarcity, and deforestation. For years now, Indian cities have been ranked in the chart for top 10 cities with the most polluted air. These issues have long-term consequences for public health and economic growth. The Global Environmental Performance Index of 2020 ranked India 168th out of 180 countries, indicating significant environmental challenges. Let's hope as India moves from its present to its future, alongside growing its economy, the country also starts making significant effort towards improvement in these areas also. Chapter 3. Global Partnerships and Oppositions No nation can prosper alone. Countries that have forged strong partnerships are more likely to succeed and that too quickly. India knows this and therefore, it becomes vital to delve into the intricate web of partnerships and oppositions that define India's standing in the world. India's strategic partnerships span continents, solidifying its presence on the world stage. Let's cover the top two. First up is India's relations with the U.S. The Indo-U.S. alliance is often termed as the defining partnership of the 21st century. It encompasses defense, trade, technology, and a shared commitment to democratic values. Going forward, it is in India's favor to further fortify this relationship. However, equally important for India is its relationship with Russia. 
a time-tested ally, the Indo-Russian friendship also encompasses multiple sectors, such as defense, space exploration, and economic collaboration. Along with growing partnerships, India's path to global influence has also found itself some diplomatic challenges. First is from the Dragon's Ascent. China's rapid rise as a global superpower necessitates a delicate balancing act for India, especially in the context of border disputes and economic competition. Then comes India's proxy wars with its Western neighbor. India's relationship with Pakistan remains fraught, with the specter of terrorism perpetually casting a shadow over bilateral ties. And let's not forget India's extended neighborhood, from Afghanistan to Central and Southeast Asia, which also demands nuanced diplomacy to navigate geopolitical intricacies. Coming to another aspect of partnerships and oppositions, multilateral forums. Moving forward, India cannot rely only on bilateral relationships. It should also give increased weightage to the different multilateral organizations and alliances that it is a part of. The Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, or the Quad, is at the top. Quad brings together India, the US, Japan, and Australia to foster regional stability, economic growth, and democratic values. Then there is G20. India's seat at the G20 table empowers it to shape global economic policies and advocate for reforms that reflect the interests of emerging economies, especially Global South. And then we have BRICS. As a member of BRICS, India participates in a grouping that represents over 40% of the world's population, offering immense economic potential and a platform for South-South cooperation. BRICS also gives a platform for India to have tough but necessary dialogues with China. Let's also not forget other alliances that have lost their charm in recent years, but still attract a lot of political clout. Some of the prominent ones are the United Nations, the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, and the Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi-Sectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation. As we conclude our journey through the intricate tapestry of India's economy, one thing becomes abundantly clear. India's story is one of contrasts, challenges, and colossal potential. As India charts its course in the 21st century, it should do so with a vision of not just economic prosperity, but holistic progress that should leave no one behind.